In this video, I'll show you how to turn back time and restore a photo that's nearly 100 years old. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV. Now, today I'm back in the studio, but I'm not going to be photographing a person. I'm actually going to be photographing a photograph. Yeah, I know that kind of sounds a bit crazy, doesn't it? But we're going to do some restoration. So in a bit, I'll show you how I do the Photoshop part of the restoration. But to begin with, of course, we have to actually photograph the photograph. Now, any photography, it lives and dies on lighting. The better the lighting, the better the photograph. So for today, I'm using these two guys here. Uh, these are two continuous lights, and they're going to be my illumination for this shoot. Now, you might be wondering why I'm using continuous light and not flashlight. Well, you could use flash. There's no particular reason why not. The advantage of continuous lights, though, is you see exactly what you're going to get. So when you look through the viewfinder, you can tell instantly whether it's worked or not. And because this isn't moving, I don't need to worry about fast shutter speeds or freezing action. So continuous light it is. Now, the lights themselves are fairly small, and that's OK because the object we're going to photograph is fairly small. But the angle at which I put them is absolutely vital. So rather than having the lights fairly high up and beaming down, I'm actually going to put the lights down fairly low. So let's just drop these right the way down, and this one as well, like that. Now, the reason I've done that is because I'm going to be shooting from above looking straight down. And if I have the light coming straight down from above, what's going to happen is the light will come down, hit the surface of the print, and bounce straight back into the camera. And that's going to give me flare, reflections, and it's going to give me a, a bad photograph to start with. And I need the best quality image into Photoshop to get the best quality results. So by having the lights down at 45 degrees or lower, the light's going to come in, bounce off the surface, and go away from the camera. That's the theory, anyway. Speaking of cameras, um, I better go and get one. OK, so for my camera, I'm going to be using my good trusty setup that I use again and again, the Canon 5D Mark II. It's a full frame camera, going to give me the very best quality that I can get. And also my 24 to 105 lens. Again, it's an L quality lens, going to give me the best quality into the camera and therefore hopefully the best quality print out of the computer. So that's the camera. What about the setup? Well, I'm going to be working in aperture priority mode, and I'm going to be working around about f11. Simply put, f11 gives me the very best quality I can get out of this lens. On a full-frame camera, sometimes the edges of your, your images can be a little bit soft, so by stopping it down to f11, I'm going to minimize that effect. So aperture priority mode, f11. ISO, well, that's going to be as low as I can go, 100 ISO. Finally, I'm going to frame it up. So let's come down here. And I'm using my zoom lens, and this has a nice little bonus in as much as I can actually zoom in and out to frame this as close as I can. But you'll notice I'm not going to frame it all the way up to the edges, simply because I don't want any soft edges, and I can crop those out if I've got a bit of working space. OK, we're pretty much ready to go. All we've got to do now is turn the lights on. That always helps. And then my first shot, I'm actually going to take a picture of a grey card. Now, I normally use a grey card for portraits and things like that. But in this case, I want to make sure that I get the colours of the print correct. Even though it is a black and white sepia, I want to try and keep it as authentic as possible. So let me just slide my little grey card in. And we'll get a shot of that. Right, OK, so that's my basic image set. There's one other little trick that I have up my sleeve, and that's I'm going to use live view mode. Live view mode means I can frame everything up uh, in a nice, simple fashion. And it also means that the mirror locks up as well. So when I take my picture, there's less movement, less bounce in the picture. And again, that adds to the sharpness of the shot. Now, with everything set, I can really get away with just one or two photographs. I don't really need to take any more than that. But to be on the safe side, I'm going to bracket my shots one stop over and one stop under using exposure compensation. 
just so I can be sure that I've got as much detail in there as I can possibly pull out. And there you go, there is my photograph photographed. All we've got to do now is to get this into Photoshop and we'll do a bit of editing. And that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, so I'm back inside of Photoshop CS6. I'm just going to get the raw file that I shot. This is the one I want to use. And you'll notice it's the one with the grey card. Well, let's just turn that over the right way. At the end of the day, this was as sharp and as good as any other picture. And because I've got my grey card in the shot, all I need to do is to get my white balance tool here, then click anywhere on my YBAL card, and that's going to reset my colours. Now all I need to do is just crop this in. Now you might be wondering, why have I gone to the trouble of getting the right white balance on a black and white or sepia tone picture? Well, the brief from the client, because this was a, a proper client picture, was to try and restore this sympathetically, to try and keep the look of the old print, but still give it a, a clean up. So I started that theory then by, by trying to keep the colours correct as well. So that's what I've done. Now, when I say the colours are correct, that doesn't mean to say I don't want to make them stronger or weaker. In fact, I'm just going to take the vibrance down a little bit, just so they're not quite as yellowy orange as they were before. They're still the same tones, but I think my camera has recorded it a little bit more than I remember seeing it. OK, now what about any other adjustments here? Now, I'm actually going to be quite careful with this because I don't want to put too much contrast in at this stage because contrast is something I can add in in Photoshop very, very easily, but it's very hard to remove if it's there. And at the moment, my histogram has got really nothing in the whites and nothing in the blacks. So I think maybe a little bit more exposure would be better. And I am going to pull the blacks back slightly and I may just open up the shadows uh, I think I'm going to pull the highlights back in just like that. So technically this is quite a flat picture, but that's okay. I can restore it flat and add contrast at the end if it needs it. And that's it for RAW. Let's move into Photoshop. Okay, so here inside of Photoshop CS6, you can see I've actually spent a little bit of time restoring the lower half of the picture already, just to give you an idea of where we're heading. Uh, the top half here still needs to be done. Now, obviously, in the time I've got in this video, I can't show you every click of the mouse. So what I'm going to do is to cover my three favorite restoring tools and one really good tip. Let's start with the really good tip. The really good tip is all about layers. I'm going to come to Layer, choose New, and layer and I'll call this restored and I'm going to make a blank layer now any restoration work I do will be on that layer that gives me a, a nice way of going backwards in time really easily but it also means I can flick it on and off to really tell whether the work I'm doing is actually improving the job now the most important thing you can do on any restoration job is spend time the more time you spend on the job, the better it's going to be. So if you're the sort of person that likes instant results, maybe restoration isn't for you. But there are some tools that speed things up. Now my first one, and my favourite one, is the Spot Healing Brush. Now Spot Healing Brush has been around for a while, and in the last few versions of Photoshop, Content Aware has been added, and that's brilliant since Photoshop CS5. All I have to do now is just draw over this area like that, and even sort of very roughly, it just disappears. It's brilliant. Now, how do I restore things across her face? Well, a lot of people will grab this tool and sort of draw across and hope that the software will work. It didn't, did it really? In fact, it, it seems to have added a moustache in, and I'm pretty sure that's not correct. So how do you use this tool on more fine areas? Well, two things to do. First of all, is to make your spot healing brush much smaller, not much bigger than the area you need to restore. Secondly, go in little strokes. Don't try and do it all in one go. Just build the effect up gradually and you'll get a much better result. By the way, you'll notice that I'm working with the sample layer turned on. So that will actually sample all of my layers and build up the effect on my empty blank layer. That means I can flick this on and off very quickly. So I'm using this just to build up the effect. The other little tip I'll give you, if we just whiz over here, is don't be afraid if something goes wrong. If, if it doesn't quite work right, like that, it sort of added a lump in there, just build the effect up a couple more clicks and that will do the job. Okay, so the spot healing brush is a very powerful tool. What if you don't have the spot healing brush or you want to use something else? Well, then have a look at the clone stamp tool. 
Again, make sure that all layers is turned on. It'll be off by default, so make sure you go and switch that on. And that means I can come and sample. Let's check and put that back on. There we go. Come and sample a layer. Now, it does help to press the Alt key. So I'll press the Alt key, and I can use this tool to line up the area I want to heal and restore. So I can line up his shirt and his shoulder like that. And there we go. So it's a very powerful tool, very good when you need to follow edges. So I need to follow the edge of the print here. So let's just sample there, and then we can just go and do that little bit around there. And it's a good idea to move your sampling point every now and again, hold the Alt or the Option key on a Mac, of course, and just resample to tidy things up. OK, so that's also a useful tool. What about the last tool? Well, the last one is specific to Photoshop CS6. And you'll find it hidden away beneath, beneath the spot healing brush. It's the patch tool. Now, I know you're all going to shout at me and say, well, the patch tool has been around since Photoshop CS4, 3. I can't remember. Quite a while. Well, in Photoshop CS6, they took the normal patch tool and gave it content aware ability. This is terrific. This applies the content aware in a very specific place. So I can draw very roughly, I can go right over the edge of the border, all the way up the top, over the edge of the border, and back down again. Now normally going over the edges here and here would cause the patch tool to try and blend in these light and dark tones. But now I can drag my patch sample over and let go, and it'll keep that line intact. Wow, look at that, that is just so much better than it was before. Now I can very quickly whiz around, tidy these areas up, making quite rough selections, and it'll just work. And there we go. It's perhaps not quite as accurate as, say, the, um, the clone tool, so do bear that in mind, but it's a very, very quick and very powerful way of healing up large areas. So I can go find that bit there, and these kind of bits here, we can go sample from a, a cleaner area over there. Okay, so I can use that tool to really speed up my effect. And obviously you have to use it over a larger areas and take time to build it up. So there is my restored image so far, and that's the bits I've done in those few seconds that I've been doing this. But through the magic of video, here's the final restored picture. And I've tried to keep the elements of the original so it's not looking like a modern picture that's old, but an old picture that's been lovingly cared for. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.